Welcome back to Retro Rewire. My name is JJ in the hunt once again at the Oizumi Hard Off. And I gotta say, these guys were fully stacked with both new stuff, modern stuff, and retro, everything in between. Let's have a look here. We have some Nintendo Switch just kind of lining up. I guess, I don't know if this would be considered the primary showcase, but it is the one that is across the cashier. And look at this thing. 99,000 yen some pokemon what is that like a soundtrack or something that thing is super expensive and that one just caught me off guard right off the bat and then here we have something a little bit more humble a little bit more modest some amiibos and then next to that we have a game boy advance sp 25,000 yen and this is going to be i believe the famicom colored version haven't seen that one in a while actually i think i saw it at the sate so i'm a liar here we go, 25,000 yen. Let's go ahead and take a look at this guy. Now, this Neo Geo Pocket is, uh, you know, the color version, 38,500 yen. And I believe that was like the North American version. Here we have a Super Nintendo Mini, a Junior, whatever you want to call it. We got Pokemon XD coming in at 5,000 yen. And I believe this one is pretty pricey, uh, the North American equivalent. And then here, just an assortment of mini systems. We got the Famicom Mini, Super Famicom. And then we have some uh, that don't include the box there. And then on the side here, we have a GameCube game, which I haven't seen before, which is uh, Far East of Eden, Manji Maru. Uh, I had no idea that that one was uh, available for the, the GameCube. Here we have some color uh, game and watches, some more uh, mini systems, and the Switch and a few accessories. Let's go ahead and look at this bad boy. Now this is the... I have no idea what character that is, but it is Pokemon. 24,500 yen. That thing does look pretty mean. Now let's go ahead and move on to the next showcase. And this one's going to be an assortment of retro games. And there's going to be a lot of good stuff in here. Never mind the price. But up top, we have a Sega Dreamcast. Uh, there were some arcade sticks there. And then we have a Nintendo GameCube. And both of those are coming in at 10,000 yen, respectively. And then the arcade sticks are just kind of uh, all over the map with the pricing. But in the display case itself, you know, we got some PC Engine, some Famicom, some Sega Genesis, and there was a few things in here that, oh man, I was really wanting to get. But the budget, you know, we always have to mind the budget. But here we go, we have a future space role-playing game. Uh, I have no idea what that is. Space Harrier for the PC Engine, 2,600 yen. And then here we got a Famicom Disk System game, Load Runner, I believe that is. And then we have Castlevania 3, 14,000 yen. I'm going to pick up a copy of that. Um, in the next few months, we got Sonic and Knuckles. That one has been there for quite some time. And then in the next shelf, just an assortment of uh, more games. We got PlayStation 2 and more Famicom, Sega Saturn. Let's have a closer look and take a look at some of these goodies. We got Silphied for the Mega CD, 2000 yen with the OB card. That's a brilliant game. Love that game. We got Strider here for the Sega Mega Drive coming in at 3000 yen. We have Glay Lancer for 10,000 yen. What's the deal here? I know that's not the original uh, print run. And then we have Argus by Jellico and some Sega Saturn titles and some PC FX. Not something you see every day. We got some Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming in at 6,000 yen. Down below, we got some... They had quite a bit of Famicom games now that I... You know, I'm taking a look, uh, a closer look at the footage here. But we have Chrono Trigger there. We got some Neo Geo business. And look at that. We got... This is going to be a lot of the, the Neo Geo stuff that you can expect to see. And then what do we have here? This is like some PC type of game. And then this PlayStation 2 game, some Battle Arena International or Lancer Arena. I don't know. We got Parodius, Sexy Parodius. What is that? For the PSP, we got Silent Hill, 2,500 yen. That's not too bad of a price for that. The North American equivalent is like a couple, a couple of hundred dollars now. Now here we have some uh, PC Engine CD-ROM-ROM -ROM titles. We got the original and the sequel, both coming in at 1,800 yen. And then next to that, we have a copy of Alundra for the PlayStation 1. And that's going to be 2,200 yen. Definitely like that cover. And with the Obi card, we got Formation Z for the Famicom, 2,000 yen. And then next to that, we have this, which I have no idea what that could be. But it looks like the price a little bit blurry there, but I believe it was 5,000 yen. And now look at this down below. This thing is just fully stocked with some Neo Geo CD goodness and a few other things which we will take a look at. But the Neo Geo CD, look at that. We got the Last Blade 2 coming in at 7,000, KOF 99 at 8,000 yen. 
Now, some of these might be a little bit higher priced than what we're normally used to seeing, but far east of Eden, 5,000 yen. I believe that's reasonable for this uh, for that fighter. We got Fire Suplex um, coming in at 5,000. We got Burning Fight for 15,000 yen. Prices just are just kind of all over the map. We got Fatal Fury for 7,000. And then we have this World Heroes quiz type of game. I haven't seen this one before, but that's coming in at 5,000. We got Magician Lord, 15,000 yen. That one's a bit pricey. Then we got Viewpoint for 7,500. And then we have Overtop. Look at that. 60,000 yen. And above that, we got Neo Drift Out for 35,000 yen. My goodness, we got the Last Blade for 5,000. What else do we have here? We got a couple of fighters, or a few fighters. We got Real Bout Special for 3,000, Fatal Fury 3 for the same price. And then we have this one. Um, I used to have this, uh, 6,000 yen. Forget the name of that one. It's, it's a fairly common game, just having a brain fart. But we have a Double Dragon there for 9,000 yen. I believe that's a little bit um, higher uh, asking price here. But then here we have uh, the Golfing Game, forget the name of that one. And then uh, Samurai Showdown 2 for 6,000. We got the Arcade Pad 6 and the Avenue Pad 6, both in the box. 7,000 there for the Avenue Pad 6. And I actually have that controller, although mine didn't include the box. And then we have the Memory Base, the 128 kilobyte, I believe, for 7,000 yen in the box. Some Super Famicom games. And then we have the Lone PC FX game for 2,000 yen. And you're going to notice that they had quite a bit of uh, PC FX games in a couple of these cases as well as neo geo but here we go let's have a look at the next case and this one was right across from the junk section but a lot of the titles here a lot of great stuff as well we got some super famicom stuff we got bare knuckle 2 there that one was actually 3,000 or 4,000 yen but it was missing the manual we have some more neo geo games we have uh, uh garo special and art of fighting 2 and then an assortment of Super Famicom and Famicom titles. And then we have Skies of Arcadia, the limited edition, as well as the Police Knots limited edition for the 3DO. And those were there uh, last year when I visited. But we got, um, oh, we got the Ninja Cop. Uh, I forget the name of this one. I, ha I had no idea this existed, and I actually looked it up because of this video. But it seems pretty cool. We got Super Mario USA for 4,000 yen. And the condition of the box of, of the box there looks pretty good. And then there's the sequel, part 3, for 2,000 yen. I believe that's pretty reasonable, considering the condition there of the box. We have Lunar Ball, Super Valis, and then we have Castlevania next to Super Valis. Curse of Darkness for 12,000 yen. And then the Legend of Zelda DX, that was 4,000 yen. We have some Goemon, Rockman 7, Goemon 3, Vulcan, and then uh, Dragon Quest 3. That one actually looks pretty cool, especially the opening. And Super Street Fighter 2, the new challengers. Coming in at 2,500 and some more Chrono. And then just an assortment of more games up top. We got Ninja Gaiden uh, 2, some Metal Gear front and center. And more Famicom or Super Famicom titles. And what else do we have? We have some Albert Odyssey, Donkey Kong Country 3. Another copy of Dungeon uh, D uh, Dragon Quest 3. And here we have 2,500. I believe that was like stadium events. I'm not too familiar with the Famicom library, but some more PC Engine, Saturn, Super Famicom. What do we have? Area 88 for 6,000 yen. That's not too bad of a price there. We got Castlevania for 10,000 yen. That seems to be the new norm. Although they did have a loose copy there for 2,500. We got Sam Show 4. We got Berserk for 2,500. And what else do we have here? We have a, a PC Engine title, but I'm not really familiar with that one. And then we have R-Type for 2,500 yen, which that's not too bad of a price uh, for R-Type there. I believe it's 2,500, a little bit hard to see. Then Dynasty Warriors and Crossed Swords for the Neo Geo CD. And here we go, another display case, just fully loaded with hardware and let's take a look at the playstation 5 this is the gran turismo 7 edition for 68,000 yen next to that forget about the ps5 look at this the pc engine dual rx 88,000 yen oh my goodness look at the condition of that box we're gonna have a, a little bit closer look at that but 22,000 for the sega saturn as well look at the condition of this stuff it looks awesome and then we have a Mega Drive uh, 2 controller, 6 button. But look at, look at the box here on the Duo RX. That thing is pretty clean considering it's vintage. And then we have this PlayStation 2 or 3 controller for 6,000 yen. I haven't seen that one before. Some kind of limited edition. 
And then we have the slime from the Dragon Quest series. Look at that. 27,500 yen for this PlayStation 4. And that thing actually looks kind of cool. And then up top we have some PlayStation Vitas just kind of lining up there. Both uh, the 1000 and the 2000 series. And then here we have another end cap just stocked with hardware. My goodness. I, I don't know. Some Somebody must have just came in and then sold off their entire collection here. But we have uh, a Series S for 33000 Next to that we got the Wii U. This is uh, FE something for 12000 I actually have that game. Forget the name. But we have a Mega CD for 44,000 yen. Now, a lot of these boxes are empty. They keep uh, all the, the contents in the back room. And then we have uh, FZ10 3DO for 20,000 yen. A lot of great hardware here. My goodness. And then we have a Wii U for 6,600 yen, a basic set. What's that, like 50 bucks more or less? And then here we have a Deluxe in the white and black colors. And this one's coming in at 14,300 yen. Up above, we have a PlayStation 5 for 57,500 yen. A lot of great stuff here. And you got to keep an eye out because you're going to miss out on the great stuff. Look at this. Oh, yes. The Neo Geo AES, 100,000 yen. I almost missed this guy, but they had it closer to heaven up above. And just uh, lo and behold, that thing was a thing of beauty. Not so sure about the price, but if you want it, they got it. And then here on the end cap, just an assortment of little uh, knickknacks. We got some memory cards for the Cube, the Xbox, and the PlayStation 2. Look at this one. Brand new Final Fantasy 12, 3,500 yen. Now, this was released by Hori. And then, you know, of course, they're going to have your Nintendo Switch titles. We're going to take a quick glance at them. We're not going to go too much into detail here. And that, that section was fairly small. But they also had PlayStation 4. Of course, they're going to have the PlayStation 4 and look at all this stuff. A lot of PlayStation 4 goodness here. And there was a few uh, North American titles uh, mixed in there. I think that was like actually the biggest section in the, in the gaming aisle. It's going to be PlayStation 4. But look at this. An arcade stick for the Dreamcast. Now, this could be new old stock coming in at 6,600 yen. We have an AV modded Famicom for 7,700. And look at the color on that one. This one is also an AV Famicom, and it's coming in at a thousand yen less. And there we have our composite leads, and then here is just kind of giving a little detail of what what it's about. And then there you can see the modification done to it. We got some PlayStation Three stuff, a very small section. In fact, uh, only two little shelves there, and it's just kind of a whole assortment of uh, machines here. A lot of games. We got Galgun. I believe I thought that was like a PlayStation Vita exclusive, but it looks like it started life on the PS3. We got the uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider for the 360. Some Xbox One titles. And here we have a couple of European and North American region games. We have uh, the 30th Anniversary Collection of Street Fighter and the Sega Genesis Collection for 4,000 yen. That's a little bit pricey. But then again, it's a little bit harder to come by uh, here in Japan. And then here we have some kind of tactics game for the original Xbox. And we got some Wii U good goodness here. We got the Hudson Soft, the best, uh, some kind of game that they released. And then the Wii U. Now, this is a, a console that I usually uh, skip over. We got some Fatal Frame titles, but let's spend a little bit of time with the Wii U because I know in, in uh, back home in North America, in the US, there's like a Wii U craze, but 500 yen for Mario Kart 8 there. That's like, that's peanuts. That's nothing. And what do we have here? Fist of the North Star for 1,200. We got Tank 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 for 1,400. What else do we got here? We got the Game and Wario for 1,200. So a lot of reasonable prices here for the Wii U. Nothing that's going to be crazy expensive like the North American counterparts. But I wonder how many of these games actually include English language option options. What else do we have here? Uh, Kaiman Rider or something like that. It looks like this is like a one that's based off the past. And then Paper Mario for 1,800. I should really test these out. Uh, I don't have a Wii U though, but 1,000 yen. Uh, test them out for English language options. Because that could save a few people quite a bit of money, especially for the people that just want to play the games. We got the Dragon Quest Collection for the Wii. 
And yeah, not too bad of a selection there for the Wii U. Then we have Initial D Special Stage for 1200 That's the lowest price that I've seen that. We got uh, Resident Evil Biohazard 4 for 1400 Lately, that game has risen in price. And then we have Biohazard 0 for 1400 And that one shouldn't, that has no business being that expensive. <laughs> That's usually like a 400 yen game. We have SBC Chaos for 2,500. We got Silent Hill 4 The Room for 2,500. And they also had a copy of Part 3 for uh, 2,000 yen. So a little bit less expensive than Part 4. What else do we have here? We have Biohazard 4 for 500 yen. And then the Final Fantasy 7 Remake uh, Cloud and his bike there, a figure. And then another end cap of loose cards, uh, uh, and then uh, complete in the box, Super Famicoms. But look at all this loose cart business. I didn't really uh, dig in through the carts here too much, but we will take a look at some of these Adventure Island titles. Look at that. That's a pretty cool uh, cover art there for part two. Now, the original, I used to have this. I got it for 100 yen. I cleaned it up and I sold it, but 1,008 and 80 yen here and then this one because it has somebody's name on it is 550 yen and this is like an old look at this old sign for what they were buying street fighter 03 for 2500 that's crazy but we have some dvds just kind of listing uh, mega drive and uh all sorts of other goodness uh famicom i wonder if these are pretty good there could be some valuable information on these dvds and 4,500 there, so not, not not really too cheap. But let's go into the junk section. Now the junk section is one of my favorite sections. Here we have a PlayStation 3 Resident Evil 5 limited edition. It has the Tricell logo there for 4,400. It looks like it's just getting a blinking light. And it's probably something that could be easily repaired, but look at that. I like, I like how it has like the biohazard name on there too. And then we got some Xbox 360s. You know, we got the, the elites, all sorts of uh, different colors there. And then we have the PlayStation 1 coming in, coming in at 3,300 yen. And then a whole bunch of arcade sticks. Quite a bit. And some of these have been here uh, since uh, I last visited. Now, this is one that I own. This is the PlayStation 1 uh, Hori uh, mini fight stick. 2,000 yen there before sales tax. And that's a great stick, but just be mindful that it is tiny. So if you have big hands, it might not be uh, the best option. But I do like that uh, arcade stick. And then look at all these little knickknacks that they have here, like little protectors for your DS Lite. We got some uh, cases for the Game Boy Advance. And then another Hori uh, fight stick there. This one's a little bit less. And then here we have the PS, PS uh, PlayStation uh, little audio thing, an Xbox 360 controller for 1,100 yen. And then I'm just kind of digging through here. I'm looking for my S-Video cable for the Xbox 360 as I'm, I play that one on the CRT. And then just in a, a whole so, just a whole bunch of stuff in here. Uh, 2,000 yen before sales tax uh, for the Wii U gamepad. Another uh, or a Dreamcast controller there. I believe that one was uh, 1,100 yen. Yep. And then I actually picked this one up. For the PSP, the little audio uh, volume controller, as well as this for my DS Fat, 200 yen. I want to get those little protectors, and just a whole bunch of accessories. And a lot of these are new, mind you. And then we here we have the ASCII uh, Fight Stick X, and then we have our software, quite a bit of software actually. And you're gonna find stuff here for like the Famicom, the Super Famicom, the Saturn, Dreamcast, PlayStation 3, 360, PS2, PSP, PS Vita, and a few other uh, platforms. But here we have Klonoa 2 for the PlayStation 2 for 550 yen. I haven't played that one. I wonder if it's uh, as good as the original. And then we have another copy of Initial D for 1650, but the one that's in the regular game stacks is a little bit better condition, and I believe those were the same price. But look at all this Xbox 360. Quite a bit of titles there. And then they had more Wii U. Uh, what's the price on that Donkey Kong? Tropical Freeze, 1,400. We'll take a look at a few more here. We got the Zelda... Uh, Warriors game, I forget the name of that one, but Super Mario 3D World, 500 yen. Uh, Super Mario Bros. Wii U for 500 yen. Now this is before sales tax. We have Pokken for the same price. So pretty pretty cheap actually. For Splatoon, same price. 
and then Mario Kart 8 for 550 yen. My goodness. We got Rockman X5 for 1,100. There was a there was a few good titles in here, like this Jumping Flash for 300 yen before sales tax. And I do love that cover. That was a great game. Still a great game. We have Christmas Nights for 330 yen. And then Tekken 2 for 330 yen. That's a classic game. And then Bomberman Land for 330 yen. So a nice assortment there. And look at this. Protect your 3DS from the water. From water damage. We got a Wii U for 660 yen. A couple of Xbox 360s. And what else do we have? Uh, PlayStation 3s. Now this is going to be like the graveyard. So who knows what's going on with these. You got to read the, the, the tags real carefully. We got some Super Famicom and all sorts of colors there. A couple or a few Sega Saturns. Look at that. Three of them. We have a, a, a Super Famicom uh, case. But I believe it's supposed to have like a little image there that's kind of been wiped out. And then, you know, now that I think about it, they had a ton of Wii and a Wii U at this location. Look at all that. But here we have some uh, in the box uh, 3DSs or uh, DS lights, excuse me, for 4,400 yen. And then just a couple of loose ones here for 1650. Now, the prices here are a little bit higher. There's another hard off that I frequent that usually has them for about a thousand yen, which is about half the price of what these guys are asking for. But that teal colored version is pretty cool looking. And then here we have one for 2200 yen. And then we have the gold N64. And just kind of looking through the bins here, you know, you can see some strategy guides and just some random stuff. And then look at this, the, the maracas for Samba de Amigo, 3,300 yen. And then, the, never mind the fishing controller, we have a disc system, 3,300 yen. Now, this one doesn't have the RAM adapter, but this one here does, and they were asking for 4,400 yen, and I brought that sucker home. Look at this. I kind of cleaned it up as best as I could, and I replaced the belt and did all the other maintenance that is necessary. And I'm happy to report that it is in working condition. Look at this. We got the classic tune playing. And we're going to do a quick test on it just to make sure that it is fully functional. I have Castlevania here for the disc system. Going to pop that right in. And it's kind of funny the noise that it makes when it, uh, when it loads. It's not, it's not too loud, but it's interesting that it's loading. And I haven't played a game off of a floppy since, oh my gosh, the late 80s. But look at this thing. We got the film strip. Um, it, it's definitely a novel way to play, and I and I do enjoy it. But oh man, uh, the, the music, the lows, uh, they bump a little bit. And look at that now loading. And the cool thing about this one is that it has save states. So as you saw, I loaded up my game, and I'm gonna go ahead and switch it off to side B. And I do like I, I do like the whole process of this, like uh, doing all this just to play the game. <laughs> It's such a neat little thing. And then as you can see, it doesn't take too, too long to load. Then there we go. But guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit up the Oizumi hard off. They have a lot of great stuff. And I hope to see you all soon. As for me, I got business to take care of. Ciao.